Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review two books on sharks. The first book I'll be discussing is called Emperors of the Deep, the ocean's most mysterious, most misunderstood, and most important guardians by William McKeever. This book was published in 2019 by Harper One, which is an imprint of HarperCollins, and the hardcover copy that I purchased with my own money comes in at 320 pages. The author of this book is a filmmaker and a conservationist, and he wrote this book to be a companion to a documentary film he made about sharks. And it seems like that film and this book share the same aim, and that's to get the truth out there about sharks. Sharks, as this author recognizes right at the top of his book, have a bit of a PR problem. They have fearsome reputations as these solitary, bloodthirsty bullies of the sea, creatures to be feared, and thus we've come to see them as our own natural enemies, when in actuality, none of that needs to be true. Sure, sharks are built like weapons. They are specialized to make meals out of other sea creatures, but they are also these magnificent animals that keep our oceans healthy, and they pose zero threat to us if we stay out of their home, if we stay out of the ocean, or if we insist on going into the ocean, we can do it in a smart way. Because it seems like every single shark attack that happens gets news attention, it's hard to gauge just how rare shark attacks are, but in this book you will find out just how rare they are. They are remarkably rare, but the way the media hypes up every single one, you would think that sharks are out there picking off several of us every single day day. Most of us will never see a shark in its natural habitat. Most of us will never see a shark outside of an aquarium. The reality is that we pose much more of a threat to them than the other way around. We kill millions of them every single year. Shark attacks do get discussed in this book, but it's coming from a place of setting the record straight. So the author examines the details of known shark attacks to try to detect any trend lines about where, when, why, and how these shark attacks happen so we can hopefully know more about why sharks attack and we can prevent it in the future. So for example, is there a species of shark that tends to attack more often? Is there a type of person who tends to get attacked more frequently? There are answers to these questions and more within the book. So if you're curious, that's something you can look forward to learning about. But shark attacks aren't the only place where William McKeever does myth busting in this book. He actually contradicts the very commonly held belief that sharks can detect a single drop of blood in the water. That actually isn't the case, and the author discusses why actually that's physically impossible. But even though they can't do that, they can do some very impressive things. Like for instance, they are very good at swimming long distances because they are essentially swimming oil tanks. They have massive amounts of oil in their livers that they can use for energy reserves as they are swimming those long distances. They can feel pain. Many different species are social, not all of them, but some of them are. But then even the non not social species, they can team up when they need to for survival or to learn things from one another. This author highlights several different species of shark throughout this book, and he talks about how their bodies evolved to chase their specific prey items. But after we as readers get that opportunity to feel astonished by everything that sharks are, the author pivots and starts talking about the sad realities of just how threatened sharks are by human activity, mainly fishing. Everything from shark fins being sliced off to include in something called shark fin soup to trophy hunting, like recreational fishing. But worst of all is commercial fishing. And sharks are caught for their meat, but they are mainly caught up in something called bycatch. And that means when a commercial fishery is fishing for something else, like primarily tuna, they use these long lines, these gigantic nets, and everything gets caught up in them, including sharks. Sharks are a kind of canary species. They indicate the health of the oceans. And if they die off, as many species are on the way to, if we don't change things, the effect on our oceans is going to be tremendous. It's like the loss of wolves in America's national parks. The loss of that apex predator throws off everything in the ecosystem. It throws off the very delicate balance, and there's this detrimental trickle-down effect to all species below. Much of this book is dedicated to discussing why changing things is going to be such an uphill battle, even if William McKeever did a great job of cleaning up the image of the sharks in the first half of the book, even if we decide we want to save them, it's going to be challenging. 
Many species of shark reproduce very slowly or they reach sexual maturity later in life, like it takes them a very long time. Some species of shark only carry pups every so often or they only carry so many pups. So it's going to be very difficult for their numbers to rebound. It's probably impossible to get their numbers back to what they were before we started fishing so recklessly. But also, it's difficult to overstate the lawlessness on the open oceans. Even if certain types of fishing were to be banned internationally, it's going to be incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to enforce those laws. There's a whole section in this book about how people are being enslaved on some of these fishing boats. Even in less extreme and tragic circumstances, people just do what they want out there because there's no one there to see them do it. So they can ignore any protections. They can come home and misrepresent their catch. They can smuggle things. Those sections of the book made for very hard reading. I'm not going to lie to you about it. They are not uplifting. They are not even necessarily encouraging. These are very, very harsh realities. But it was eye-opening. I think it's important for me and everybody else out there who reads this book. I think it's important for us to know these things. But I don't think the organization of the book was the best. I think if I had been this author's editor, I would have encouraged him to sprinkle in some of this information as we're learning about sharks so that it doesn't feel like the back half of this book is so heavy. I think it's important to keep people invested in saving sharks as we are looking some of these really big issues in the face. I also didn't think the writing was the best in this book. I thought it was a little bit clumsy. At times, I would go so far as to call it inelegant. But I do think this book was very effective in creating a new image for sharks, cleaning up their image PR style, especially if you did previously buy into their Jaws reputation. I think you'll see them in a new light when you read this book. I think knowledge helps eliminate fear. And I think you'll learn enough in this book to replace that fear with respect, and hopefully enough respect that you'll want to do your part in protecting these creatures. The second book I'll be talking about in this video also discusses protecting our shark populations, and it's fittingly called Shark, Why We Need to Save the World's Most Misunderstood Predator by Paul DeGelder. This book was published in 2023 by Mudlark, which is an imprint of HarperCollins as well, and the hardcover copy comes in at 200. 40 pages. However, I listened to the audiobook narrated by the author, which I accessed via Everand, formerly known as Scribd. This author is Australian, and he grew up deathly afraid of sharks. But even though that's a fear that followed him into his adulthood, he still decided to join the Navy, and he got a very prestigious position as what's known as a clearance diver. And he was on a mission in Sydney Harbor in early 2009, when he was attacked by a nine-foot-long bull shark. It's an encounter he barely survived. He did manage to pull through, obviously, after a lot of medical intervention, but he lost half of one of his arms and one of his legs. His worst fear in life had come true, but instead of being depressed or enraged by what all he had lost, he got curious And during his recovery, he started reading about sharks. He wanted to better understand his attacker. And in that process, he became fascinated by sharks. So after he did recover, he wanted to rejoin the Navy, but they wouldn't let him. So he started giving speeches about his experience, using his experience as an example of overcoming adversity. But he also started talking about sharks for different TV programs and documentaries. In this book, Paul DeGelder shares his enthusiasm for sharks, and he makes a really good case for why we should care about what's going on with them. And at the end of this book, he talks about the book itself and he says something about it that I think it's important to mention right now. I think it's important for anyone to know before they go into this book. Paul DeGelder makes it clear that writing this book was a passion project. He is not trying to masquerade as a shark scientist or a shark expert. He does know a lot because of the work that he does. So in this book, he just wants to share what he does know, but he also wants to use his powers of persuasion to help get us on the side of sharks. And since I listened to the audiobook narrated by the author himself, I can tell you that he is a very charming, very convincing guy. His love for sharks sings through. And as I was listening to him tell his own story, it just struck me as so extraordinary 
that a man who nearly lost his life in one of those incredibly rare shark attacks, that he didn't grow resentful about the whole thing, that he instead decided to dedicate the rest of his life to advocating for something that nearly killed him. It's just incredible. And I can see why he's made such an effective motivational speaker because his enthusiasm just draws you right in. Passion is infectious. And it's like I could feel him beaming as he was narrating this audiobook. In this book, Paul DeGelder talks about some of his favorite shark species and some of their capabilities, which a lot of that information I had already read about in Emperors of the Deep since I read that book first. But then Paul DeGelder does something that Emperors of the Deep didn't. And he takes it to a personal level. He describes a lot of his own personal interactions and experiences with sharks, both in his personal life, but then also through his work. And many of those experiences he has been able to have because of his story. This was an interesting book. It did, for me, at times get a little bit redundant because, like I said, I had just learned a bunch of shark facts in Emperors of the Deep, and then I heard them repeated in this book. But I did really appreciate that Paul DeGelder was not afraid to tell it like it is, when it comes to how we as people collectively as countries are getting it wrong when it comes to protecting sharks. There are a few nations that are getting it right, and he talks about what we can learn from them. But I liked that following that kind of condemnation of the way we're doing things, he followed that up with steps we can take, even just as individuals, to do our own part in securing the futures of these creatures. And it will be up to us, ultimately, to save them, because like I said toward the start of this video, we are their number one threat. But sadly, humans only tend to want to protect things that we personally care about while persecuting everything else, persecuting everything that we see as a threat, everything we see as not adorable. So the way to get people to care is to teach them about these creatures and show them their magnificence. Education about sharks, getting people to see them as more than just their scary reputation is key. And both of these books are a step in the right direction. I don't think either one of these is the end-all be-all when it comes to books on sharks. They were both three-star reads for me, but I do think they make for very good introductions to the subject matter, which is exactly what I needed, so it worked out for me. But those were my thoughts on these two books on sharks. If you want to read either or both, or if you have read either or both and want to share your thoughts, I'll be eager to hear from you in the comment section below. In the description box below, I've put links to where you can get your hands on copies of these books if you're interested. And also in that description box, I've included something I like to call the further reading section, where I've listed out some book titles you might want to check out if this is a topic that interests you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.